The Proctor test is undertaken in the laboratory. However, the engineer recognises that conditions on site are a little more challenging than in the lab. So some relaxation on the required dry density is permitted. Instead of the contractor having to reach the maximum dry density, a reduced value is specified. The exact reduction depends on the end use of the soil. For example, in lawns or grassed areas, 90% of the maximum dry density may be acceptable. But this may be increased to 95% of the maximum dry density beneath roads or 98% beneath lightly loaded foundations. Specifying a lower dry density has other practical advantages. It allows the contractor to achieve the required compaction while working within a range of moisture contents. The mechanics of performing the Proctor test involve filling a 1 litre mould in three equal layers, each layer being compacted by 27 blows of a 2.5 kg rammer which falls to a height of 300 mm. This process is repeated a number of times with the moisture content increasing each time. The energy imparted to the soil in this process is representative of the energies achievable on site with the compaction equipment of that time. However, many decades have passed since the standard Proctor test was developed. Modern compaction equipment is capable of imparting much higher energies and hence the Proctor test has been updated to reflect this. The modified Proctor or heavy compaction test involves the use of the same mould but this time the soil is compacted in five layers with 27 blows per layer using a 4.5 kg rammer that falls to a height of 450 mm. The implication of higher compaction energy is to increase the maximum dry density above that achieved using the standard Proctor test. Note that as the dry density increases the optimum moisture content reduces. Therefore it is not possible to achieve a higher dry density at the same moisture content. The young engineer would do well to remember this.